Okay, in this video we're going to look at the corner bridle joint. One piece of timber cut into two. I've already prepped a fair bit of this because there's a lot in this video and I don't want you to be getting bored watching me do too much. So this one's partially done. I'll do that in the next video. But essentially the two pieces go together, cut into thirds, third chiseled out of the middle. This is the forerunner to the mortise and tenon joint. And if you get this part right, which will be the tenon, we can use that in the mortise. You won't have to cut it again. So make sure you do a good job on this bit. Okay, so distance, as always, width plus two. I then put them together, squared the line across after I'd already picked the best sides for the face sides. This bit of timber's got a bit of a problem. It's got a knot in it there, which runs across right where I'm going to be sawing. I'd rather avoid it if I can, but sometimes you've got to uh, work with timber that's got uh, flaws in it, and this will give you guys a demonstration on how to work through a hard piece of wood. So I've already cut down this side, but to mark it out, I'll show you the marking technique on this guy over here. We need to divided into three. That's the important thing with this joint is it's thirds. One third, one third, and one third. And I've shown you guys how to divide a piece of wood into three without using calculations, but using <coughs> an angled ruler. Now, your pencil's got to be sharp. Obviously that's no good. A pencil with a rounded blunt end's no good. If it doesn't hurt just a little bit, it's not sharp enough. Again, we've got 35. I could divide that up if I wanted to do numbers. I don't want to do numbers, so I'll spin it around to the next number, which is easily divided by three, and that's 60. So there we have, flush on the edge, 60 running across there, 60 divided by three, 20, 40, 60. There's my thirds, one third, two thirds, three thirds. I'm hoping you guys getting the idea of how this works now. And I need to get the marking gauge set up to that. Or actually, I've got to make a choice on my chisels, which is going to be the best chisel to use. You can't get a chisel to be an exact third. It's either going to be close or it's going to be exact. It's, you can't change the width of the chisel. That one's too wide. Clearly, it's too wide. That one is just a little bit too narrow. And just like Goldilocks, that one's just right. So, we'll go with the one that's just right, as luck would have it. It's 11, 11 and a half mil. What do I need to do now? Set up the marking gauge. So, sorry, not a marking gauge, different tool this time. The difference between the marking gauge and the mortise gauge is the marking gauge has a pin on one side only. The mortise gauge has two pins on the far side. Some of them have a wind here to change the opening of that, uh, the distance between those two pins. Others have just got a slide. Lucky whichever one you get. They both work the same. When you're setting it to your chisel size, now which chisel did I choose? I didn't choose that one. So I'll put it aside, I'll put it aside, I'll keep this one at hand so I don't accidentally pick up the wrong one. Open up the points on the mortise gauge. And when you do this, make sure that you don't set the points at the, the blade at the bottom. Hello, because when you get to the... Are you hungry? 